Hello. Today we're going to look at the 6x6 box frame template kit from Dolly Dimples Crafts Limited. What it does is it makes a box, containing box, and a frame. Okay, this is what it makes for you. The box is oversized for the frame. When I can get that back up, I can, okay, so that you do have some room for additional decorative elements to be put onto the frame before you put it into the box. So it is about half an inch bigger. All the okay, and it is also slightly deeper than the frame itself. So, this is what the sheets make. This is the undecorated version. There is no back included for the frame because you could want to put it onto a variety of different surfaces and having a back is not going to be any use. In addition, what I do tend to find is that with making frames repeatedly, different materials will react in different ways and the frame can skew which means that if you have pre-cut a piece to go on the back especially if it's not from the same cardstock as the frame itself they're not going to line up properly so there is no back on this deliberately that is something to be added later when you have decided what you want to do with it so that's the frame and that's the box in their plain raw states. So what we have is five sheets of card that comprise the frame and the box. Two sheets are the frame, one sheet is the frame parts and one is the mats and layers for the frame to decorate it. By that I mean it gives you a frame from here which goes on to there and these two pieces go inside the edges of the frame and on the outside of the edges of the frame. Okay. And then we have three sheets that comprise the box. So we have two that are the box itself, and then we have one sheet of mats and layers to decorate the box. So we have five sheets of card. What do you need? You need a ruler. A ballpoint with no ink in okay um, this is really good for scoring fine lines okay if you can get a ballpoint with no ink you know one that's broken or run out or just doesn't work okay that's exactly what you need so ballpoint with no ink a pencil a rubber a bone folder a knife a pair of scissors. The bone folder is an option, okay. You can use the side of your thumbnails if you don't have a bone folder. You can use the edge of a ruler, um, just something nice and flat and sharp to enable a good solid crease for you. You are also going to require some wet glue. The glue depends on the type of product that you are gluing. If you are using a pearlized surface, this is a pearlized surface and has a gold sheen to it, it actually has a plastic coating on it. In which case, something like Collal, which is an evaporation based glue, this is not going to work very well on top of a plasticized surface. For this surface, 
you would require something a bit wetter that has a chance to soak through the plasticized surface so the dolly dimples craft glue is very very good for this step you can also use red liner tape although this will not create a permanent bond after time the tape will give up so maybe not a year maybe two years three years so if you're looking for longevity my suggestion is to use a wet glue rather than a red liner tape So that's what you need. That's what you need to provide a ruler, an empty ballpoint pen, a pencil, a rubber, a bone folder or a softer ruler than this steel metal one that I've got here, a knife, a pair of scissors and some glue. OK, so let's look at the first sheet that we've got here. This is to make the frame. And the first thing it says is to extend the line A to the edge of the page and cut. Well, this is line A here, which is on the sides of each page. OK, and although this side has gone straight to the edge, OK, this side originally did not. So all I did was I went in with my pencil and I drew along like that. OK, so just to extend it to the edge of the page, and cut it out. This bottom piece you require two pieces. Okay, so either cut one or cut two, whichever is your preference, is entirely up to you. When looking at this, I do have a suggestion. In cutting this inside section, it is going to be very hard to transfer the marks through a very thin slit in the card which would be made with a pair of scissors or a knife. My suggestion is actually to cut on both sides of this black line so that your cut is wider going down each side on this side and this side of the black line and that will enable you to create a gap that you can then get your pen through. If I hold it here, you can see that that is a very wide point and it is a lot easier to get a pen through that gap than it is to get it through a gap that isn't as wide. I'm just trying to angle that so that you can see that I've got a nice clean line in there. OK, so that is my suggestion. So we have two pieces for the box frame which I have cut out for for us already here okay so I'm going to move those out the way if you are using a patterned paper or cardstock it is rather important that you mark on your card template the way that pieces are going to fit for the grain or the pattern on your cardstock. If I take where is it? Okay. Right. This pattern runs this way. Okay. Let's use the back of this sheet. I don't think I've got anything else with a pattern on. So the pattern on this cardstock runs in this direction. So I'm just going to draw a couple of arrows so that you can see where my pattern is going. If I was to cut this from here and then turn it, the direction that my pattern is going in is going to be that way. Okay? That isn't going to work very well is it because it's going to be at odds with the rest of the pattern so if we mark this piece so that we know that the grain or the pattern is going in the same direction on these then we can turn this piece and have that arrow going up and down 
and that arrow going up and down and we will be able to get the frame and two of these out of one sheet of patterned cardstock or paper. That's the suggestion. If you don't have a pattern of cardstock, then fine. That's of no interest. But if you are using something like the wood grain from Dolly Dimples, then getting the pattern to follow round the edge of the frame could be quite important, especially if it's something like stripes. It's something that you may need to consider. Okay. So, I move this back out of the way. This is the template. Draw around it and cut it out. And to show you what I mean, I'm now going to turn this over. There are no marks on here. Once I've cut it out, there's no marks for me to figure out where I'm going. All you have to do is just join up the two lines on the edge there. So I'm going to mark this with pencil so you can see. And go straight down there. That's a score line. The two points here and here. Score again there. Where this point meets, that is another score line. So, score in there. We've got another cutaway part here. So, again, score there. Turning it round, we're going to do exactly the same again. However, this time, there is the cut lines come in. So, what we're going to do is we're going to join those up with a score line. And again, you would do this with the score tool. The empty um, ballpoint pen is very, very good at doing this. So I'm just going to shift that camera up again. So, my apologies, keep slipping. There we go. So as you can see, the frame itself is now starting to take shape. So just carry on going round joining up all those points so again point there point there we join them up oops Can't help if you actually put the real pencil on the page there we go so just down there again we've got cut marks that come to an end so we're going to score down here okay and again, we've got the triangular corners, so we're going to score along there. And to turn it round, the last few are here. So again, these cut lines. There. And again, these corners here. So we have the frame, okay? This is the surface that we have scored on. What we then want to do is we want to fold the score lines back towards the inside so that each of these is, each of these folds has to go the same way. Okay, so I'm just... fold this. All these scores go in towards the back of the cardstock, okay? So this is your pretty side, okay? This is the side that you don't want everyone to see, so you're just going to make sure that all these fold back on themselves. As you go around, the frame will form in your hands. All right. These two sides here will fold back like this. 
and then you will find that you have a gap where this side and this side form the inside of the frame, these two pieces here, but there is nothing on this part of the frame, okay, which is where this piece comes in. Now you've been asked to cut two. This will slide exactly in that gap. Okay, and this will then cover the inside of the frame. So what you're going to do is you're going to do exactly the same again. You're going to get the ruler and I'm just going to mark it for you. Let's see. also have these two points at the end. Okay, so this is just simply transferring the markings. So we can just fold these back. Okay, so these fold back. That is the surface of the card we want. Okay, but these two are actually going to fold forward. These two create valley folds. Okay, because that's the flat of your card, then it goes down into a valley and comes back up again. These are mountain folds because they go up and down, so they create a, a mountain for you. Okay, so once that's scored, my suggestion is you put glue along one of these edges here, you lay the box template down flat, you open it out, and you actually physically slide that piece into place making sure that everything is lined up and then pressing down tight. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to quickly glue this into place with a bit of tape pen. So. There we go. And a bit of glue. So this will fit into there. I'm going to line it all up first. And I'm going to press down on the top, okay, and get a really good seal there. Obviously, I'm doing this so you can see it. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to push that back, and as I turn it over, pull it all the way back, and these two flaps will come around the side, and they will glue there. Okay, and that will hold the sides of the inside of the frames. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the one that I've done and show you. Okay, so if I um, open these out, here is one side that I haven't stuck. So I'm going to push that into position along that score line, making sure it's nice and straight, and give it a squeeze. These will tabs wrap around the outside of the pieces that are already attached and that will create a nice strong frame for you to be able to use. To mount this onto card or whatever my suggestion is the inside measurement of the frame is actually four inches. Okay so that's four inches there by four inches here. This is important when you are looking at a piece of decoupage such as this. If I slide this in, this is a sneaky peek of something. To get this fairy into the frame, I'm actually going to lose her legs and the bottom of the dress. So, although she will fit like that, if that's how I want her in, if I wanted the full image, this is the wrong size frame for her, okay, because it is only four inches from here to here, okay, and four inches from there to there. So, put that out of the way. I did show you the template sheet with this one for the mats and layers, and when you cut it out, you end up with four pieces. So, we have the outside frame. A piece that will fit in the back if you require it. 
we have a smaller piece and we have a longer piece. So once they're cut out, this will then go around the outside of the frame like that, leaving a small gap around the edge on the inside and the outside to allow you to frame it nicely. You also get this piece which has come out. Now this can be used as part of the backing for the frame. Okay, there isn't much room on it, but you may find that you prefer to do that and get it into position before sticking it down. So keep this piece. This piece is important for figuring out what part of the image you want to put into the frame. Okay. So we have the outside frame there, and we have two pieces. One is longer, and that is the one for the outside of the frame, and we'll go along like that. Okay. And then one that is shorter will go along the inside of the frame. Like that. Okay, so that's your mats and layers done for decorating the frame up.